Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to Advanced Search Tips 101. Uh, today, we're going to talk about using advanced search tips to be able to navigate search everything and some of the library resources. So if you head to the library's homepage, you'll notice that search everything is our default page. And you can go on here and search for any topic that you have going on and find different results. So let's say I was doing research on climate change, right? Uh, there's going to be a lot of different resources that are going to pop up for this topic. So just looking at our search results list, we have over 9 million results. And I don't know about y'all, but I don't have time to go through that many, and I'm sure that you don't. So there's a lot of ways to weed this down. Now, in the past, we've used article search, and we've recently switched to the search everything, which means that there's new resources that are available in here, including eBooks and other resources that weren't previously available in our article search. So to navigate to the filters to be able to narrow down what it is you're looking for, underneath the search bar at the top, you'll notice there's an all filters button. If you click that, a list of limiters is going to pop up that you're going to be able to use for your research. These are tools that are going to narrow down or limit your topic to make it more manageable to navigate through the sources available. Up at the top, you'll notice right away there's online full text this will limit to things that only have PDF and full text copies available. I don't recommend this because you can request things through interlibrary alone and you're going to lose out on those titles if you weed them out that way. You can limit to peer reviewed, which is going to limit to peer reviewed scholarly articles. There is a date range option you can narrow by date. This is particularly useful if you need things that are more recent or within a specific time range. You can do that if you want a custom range that's not just the last year or five years or 10 years, click on that custom range and you can type in the date range that you want to search between. Maybe you only want things from the 1990s. You can type in 1990 to 1999 and get a list of results that are just popping up in that time frame. My favorite to use is this subject area. It's going to come up with the most common subject terms, which are keywords within your search. So you'll see climate change and global warming are right up there. We've got climatology and ecology. So looking at particular areas, uh, environmental science and geography. So you can get a feel for what areas are being discussed in your topic, different stakeholders. You might notice scientists, you might notice humans, um, land use, things like that, um, environmental policies. So you can go in here and you can click on any of them that are relevant. So maybe you're not looking at global warming specifically. Maybe you're looking at the impact on oceans or the impact of recycling. So you can click on climate change. And then I want to go down here and maybe I'm looking at sustainability. So click on those options, apply filters. Now we're going from 9 million results down to 1 million. Still a lot, but we've weeded out a lot of that. So go in here, and now I'm going to go back into my filters, and I'm going to narrow to the last five years. And I just want maybe peer-reviewed sources. I'm going to weed out magazine articles, newspaper articles, books, all of those sorts of things, and see what we're left with. And for our peer-reviewed articles on climate change and sustainability in the last five years, there are 318,000. So we've gone from 9 million down. And we can keep doing this by taking a look at these different topics. Any of these options are going to give you a abstract, which is a short summary. So you can see some of that popping up right here below the title. You can click on any of these to get a longer paragraph that tells you about what the article is. Take a look at that before you go into any PDF article. It's going to save you time and effort reading through and seeing if it's worth your time. The results are going to tell you, um, or if you click on the article, if we have immediate access to it. So take a look at that PDF. These ones say access now PDF. Um, if we don't have it when you click access now, it will tell you to request it through ILLiad, which is our interlibrary loan system. But it looks like most of these we have access to. So you can take a look through that and see what's going to be useful for you. Over on the side are a couple of new options that are going to be useful for your searching. So while you're going through these searches, if you want to go back to a previous search and um, see some previous results, under dashboard, go to searches. 
and this is going to pop up the searches you know so our original climate change some of the different filters that we've added and you can click on any of those and go back to those search results you can also see any articles you've clicked and viewed if you want to go back and get more information on those while you're searching here's that one that we clicked on right there if we would clicked on more you'll see a bigger list these are great there's also a concept map tool that if you click on that, you'll um, see a climate change map. Um, some topics are better than others. You can take a look and see suggestions for what topics are connected with your larger topic, which is great. So you could take a look at any of those. Now, as you're doing searching, I will say that there are a few tips and tricks that kind of go above and beyond as we talk about our advanced search tips. So in our search, you can connect your keywords with one of three Boolean operators. So when you type a list of words, the default is and. It believes that you put and in between every word, even if you didn't actually do that. So if we go here into our search and we go back, it assumes that you're doing climate and change. And you can go up here into the advanced search and see the climate change and that and is default there. But you can click on this and you can see you rotate between and, or, and not. These are the Boolean operators. So and is in a Venn diagram between two words, looking at that middle area connecting them. So if I'm looking at puppies and kittens, it's looking for things that are puppies and kittens. If you use puppies or kittens, it's going to expand your search. <clears throat> it's going to give you anything related to puppies or kittens, including things that are in that middle intersection. And if you want puppies, not kittens, you can use the word not to weed out results. This is helpful if you're having things pop up that aren't necessarily relevant. So you can type your topic, not science, not nursing, not um, art, not whatever area it might be popping up. So for example, if you were in a class studying fairy tales and you were looking for Cinderella, you might um, want Cinderella, not Cinderella complex, right? Not any medical condition that might be popping up with that fairy tale name in it. So subtle differences with that. You can also, as you're searching, use an asterisk with the root of a word to find different variations of that word. For example, if I were using writ, W-R-I-T, with an asterisk, I'm going to find things like write, writing, rewritten, write-off, unwritten, writability. Any of these versions that have W-R-I-T as a root in that word are going to pop up. And so that saves you time off of having to research all of these different words. Um, you can use that asterisk to help increase your search capability. And the last one here is quotation marks. Quotation marks you want to use with two or more words, and it's looking for them as a phrase in the exact order that you've typed it in. So if we were looking at things related to video games, I would want to put video games in quotation marks to make sure that we find things that are actually video games, because it'll look for video and games. It'll look for things that have maybe DVDs or TV or YouTube videos, um, games, video board, maybe even mind games. So you're going to find things about actual video games, but you'll also find some other articles that might not be related to your topic. So if we go and do some sample searching for these areas. So if I wanted to do, let's see. Um, Puppies and kids. Yeah, I'm just going to do dogs and cats. We'll be more professional, my friends. Dogs and cats. And we search for that. We have one and a half million results. But if I do dogs or cats, Now we've got 14.7 million results. And if we do dogs, not cats, kind of add a space there, 7 million. So um, you can use this and get some of these different results. And if I do a search for, um, I don't know about you all, but I get stressed when I'm writing. So maybe stress and rhyming would help if I could spell correctly. 
So stretch writing, see how many results come up for that. We have over 3 million results. But if I do stress and writ with an asterisk, getting to the root of that word, now we've got 6 million results. So we've increased the amount. And you'll notice highlighted are the different versions. So we've got written, we've got um, do, do, do write, we've got writing, um, we've got different versions of the WRIT root with our words. So you're going to find more results that way. So the asterisks can be very helpful. And if I did a search for video games, just to see what pops up, just typing that out, we have uh, almost 6 million results. But if I put video games in quotation marks to see how many results we get, now I've only got 817,000. So it's weeding out other sources that only talk about videos, only talk about games that don't have them combined into a phrase. So use these tools to help narrow things down. And one other tool I will talk about is source type. I didn't mention this earlier, but up here at the top, one of the options is source type. So this is also helpful as you're narrowing down what type of thing you're looking at. So we've got journals, magazines, news, eBooks, all sorts of different things. Um, so you can weed those down specifically in there. So if you know that you just want an eBook or you're looking for newspaper articles, you can click on news, narrow that down. Um, and so now we've got 162,000 newspaper articles that talk about video games. So take a look at these tools, practice with them, see what's going to be useful for you. Um, and if you have any questions, of course, always feel free to ask a librarian. You can talk to us in person, you can email us on our homepage, you can even chat with us through the chat with us button while we're open, lots of different things. So if you have questions, ask the librarian and good luck with your searching.